my friends. Today is going to be my stats of 2020 and my favorites from 2020, obviously. <laughs> First things first, I'm just going to slide over here so we can go ahead and have some space for some charts. Cool. In 2020, I read a total of 111 books. And of those 111 books, there were 36,667 pages, which is to say a lot of pages. First, we will look at the monthly chart. And so this is how many books I read per month. My high months were February, August, October, and November. And forgive me while I read these off my phone because I can't remember these off the top of my head. And my low months were January, July, and June, which is weird, but accurate. And next we will look at books if they were or were not on my physical TBR. So 80 of the books that I read were from my physical TBR. 18 were books that I borrowed from the library. Five were rereads and eight were ebooks. A lot of the ebooks were ARCs, but also there were just some ebooks. This is when they were purchased, and this is when we get into um, some of these are larger graphs, and I'm just gonna go over like the highlights of the graphs. Not the whole thing, because that's not fun. If you wanna read it, you can pause and read it. Uh, so when were the books purchased? There were 30 purchased in 2020, 27 were purchased in 2018, 19 were library borrows, 15 were purchased in 2019, and 5 were ARCs. Which gets us into what year were the books published that I read. Uh, 27 were published in 2020, which is a lot of new books. I don't normally read that many new books, so kudos to me. 23 were published in 2019, which again, a lot. 10 were published in 2018. 11 were published in 2017. Really high number, 8 were published in 2012 don't know why 2012 is the year. Let's talk genres. I read 21 paranormal, 20 fantasy, which is to be noted that I do separate out urban fantasy, high fantasy, and just fantasy. So this is just fantasy. 15 romance, 14 contemporary, and 11 mysteries. And then, you know, an amalgamation of other smaller things. And my ratings. I think it is interesting to note that my rating scale, I do 0.25s all the way through. Um, interesting to note that 3.75 through 4.75 all have between 14 and 17 books. So that's like my main 3.75 to 4.75 is where the most of my books are rated, which is interesting. It also means that I read a lot of books this year that I really enjoyed and I'm okay with that. Age group. This one's gonna throw you for a loop. I read 38 adult books, 54 YA books, and 18 mid-grade books. This is why we're throwing you for a loop. Let's compare to last year. Last year I read nine adult books, 38 this year, nine last year. Uh, last year I read 64 YA, this year was 54, so not a huge difference, but and last year I read eight mid-grade and this year I read 18. I think it's worth noting that last year my YA was 77% of what I read and this year my YA was 47% of what I read. So big difference there. Moving on to most read authors, we have with three books each, Talia Hibbert, Maureen Johnson, Kennedy Fox, Ginny Hahn, and Jane Harper. With four books, Kate Tiernan, with five books, Amanda Hawking, and with seven books, PJ Knight, which is that mid-grade series, the mid-grade spooky series that I'm reading that's actually written by a bunch of different authors, but they're all under the name PJ Knight. Uh, something that I didn't look at or haven't looked at for the past few years um, that I started looking at this year was publishers. Which publishers am I getting more books from? And I started looking into that because I have realized that I'm really into Wednesday books. Um, which is awesome because sometimes Wednesday Books emails me and goes, hey, would you like an arc of this book? And I go, yes, yes, please, thank you. I started to look at the books that I read, where they're coming from. So 13 of the books that I read were Simon & Schuster, nine were from Wednesday Books, seven were different indie books, six are from Razorbill, and five each for Speak, Delacorte, and Berkeley. And then again, a, an amalgamation of other a bunch of things. Yeah, a lot of books from Wednesday Books, a lot of books from Simon & Schuster. 
um, a lot of books from Delacorte and Razorbill especially. Um, just books that I've like really enjoyed that I didn't really realize. I guess I should have been paying more attention to publishers I guess because I now know that there are publishers that I really enjoy their books from so. I read almost everything Wednesday Books published this year. I think there are a few books that I didn't read that they published this year and I liked all but two of them that I read so just saying. Another thing we didn't discuss last year that I want to talk about this year for clarity. Okay so as this year has moved on um, I think for the most part most of us are prioritizing ordering things from smaller indie bookstores, um, places that are not Amazon, Walmart, etc. So for clarity I went ahead and tracked where I purchased all of my books from and I wanted to go over that with you just so that you know that I'm trying to do my part too. Rather than just preaching to you that you know don't buy from Amazon, buy from a local indie, this is what I've purchased. So here we go. I did purchase 67 books this year. Of those 67, 17 were from Amazon. 15 were from Book Outlet and I this was like the first couple of months of the year. I no longer purchased from Book Outlet. I don't represent Book Outlet. I don't support Book Outlet. They ain't getting another penny of my money. If you want to know about that drama you can use Google. 11 books are from Wheatberry which is my local indie. 11 were from bookshop.org. Bookshop.org if you are unaware is a book selling website kind of like Amazon where you can support either your local indie or any local indie anywhere in the United States and also um, you can support different causes. So most of my bookshop.org purchases this year were for Wheatberry but I would say three or four of those were also when we were doing the Social Distance Book Fest. So a lot of that money also went to the Social Distance Book Fest which the organization, the Social Distance Book Fest organization, we donated all of the money that we got um, from bookshop.org. So all of that money was donated. So it either everything that I bought from bookshop.org was either donated to charity or was going directly to my local indie. And then eight books were Alcrate and then there's some other like small places but eight Alcrate, 11 bookshop.org, 11 Wheatberry, 15 book outlet, 17 Amazon. So I'm definitely still purchasing on Amazon but it's a lot lower number than what it would have been in the past and I really am trying to have my percentage of Amazon to be like a quarter of my percentage and just because there are things that sometimes it's really hard to pay $30 for a book when you could buy it on Amazon for $9. Sometimes you can't find a book the exact style that you want whether it's a hardback, paperback, a certain edition you can't find it at your local store and you can get it easily accessible on Amazon. So I'm trying to only buy things that either are like a ridiculous price difference or are harder for me to find. As I said that's for clarity because I feel like I have been preaching to you guys that you do need to, to shop at your local indie and I have said that I'm trying not to shop at Amazon as much so I wanted to go ahead and put that in for clarity so that you know that you can hold me accountable to the things that I say that you should do. Okay let's get into favorites of the year. I don't know that these are in any particular order except that the last book that we'll talk about is the only book that I read this year that got a perfect 5.25 out of 5 stars. So it's safe to say that that was like my favorite book of the year. Everything else was either a 5 or a 4.75 on my rating scale. So they were all very highly rated and there's 20 of them. I read a lot of really good books this year starting in no particular order. Probably not going to talk a lot about them. Probably just going to tell you why I liked them. I don't want this video to be three hours long so no you don't either. First is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is the lowest rated one that I put on this list. It was a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's the only 4.5. I had 19 books and I looked through my 4.5s because I was like do I want to cut out four or do I want to add a fifth book or a 20th book to get me to 20. And I really looked through the books that had 4.5 and I thought I read this book earlier this year because it is a short middle grade spooky book and I had previously read A Darker Shade of Magic and I didn't love it. This book and then subsequently reading Tunnel of Bones which I also read this year make me want to revisit A Darker Shade of Magic and I think any time that a book by an author makes you want to revisit something that they've written in the past that's a positive impact and so I feel like this book kind of deserves to be on a favorite of the year because it really does make me question how I really felt about A Darker Shade of Magic and I do want to revisit it because I really loved these books. First book we're talking about. War Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. I don't know if my wrap-up's going up before or after this. Who knows? Not me. But when my wrap-up is up I will link it in the description box below. I talk at length about this book 
and how much I absolutely love it. This is the sequel to Grave Maiden, so make sure you read Grave Maidens first. It was also wonderful. Kelly Kuhn does god tier level characterizations. There's also some books on here where there's more than one book in a series that are in my favorites list of the year. First is Get Alive Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown, both by Talia Hibbert, books one and two in the Brown Sisters trilogy. I fucking love these. I really have been getting into adult romance this year, a little bit last year, but mostly this year. And uh, I mean, I'm 33. I probably should read some adult romance. I mean, come on. Uh, these are amazing. So just so you know, they do deal with a lot of topics, depression, anxiety, fibromyalgia, all kinds of stuff. Like there's a lot of disabilities and topics and comments and just a lot of stuff dealing with grief and loss. And they're very deep, but also very steamy. And I love them. Beach Read, Emily Henry loved this. 100% loved this. Also, adult romance. Also, steamy times. Also, talks a lot about the a writer and the writing process. And as I am a writer, loved the introspective of this book. So good. This is not the book we're going to talk about. Uh, this is The Lost City by Amanda Hawking. But specifically, we're going to talk about The Ever After by Amanda Hawking, which actually isn't out yet. It is the third book in this trilogy and the ninth book in this overarching series by Amanda Hawking. Um, I loved all nine books in the series. I read them mm, several years ago. Um, and this series is new. Um, the Lost City and The Morning Flower both came out earlier this year, which I had arcs of, read, enjoyed, Wednesday books. And then The Ever After, I also had an arc of, read, enjoyed. This is one of the ways that Wednesday books came through for me this year because I have been so excited about these books since I learned about them earlier at the end of December last year. This whole series as a whole, so good. I love the way that Amanda writes her relationships. Just so good, so good. Love them. These are a fantasy series, if you're interested. Here's another one where we have two books in a series, The Tyrant's Tomb and The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan. These are books four and five in the Trials of Apollo series. Uh, if you haven't started reading Rick Riordan, I get that it's also a mid-grade, and so you're like, mid-grade, poo, 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 choo. Okay, but really though, like, the Heroes of Olympus series and the Trials of Apollo series especially. Rick's, I would say that like Percy Jackson was really good as a teenager. I would think you would think it was really good as a teenager. I didn't read it until I was in my late 20s. But I think like if you're looking at it from a teenager's perspective, very good. The other series, Magnus Chase, Kane Chronicles, Trials of Apollo, Heroes of Olympus, those series are much more adult, much more diverse. They deal with a lot of dark issues. So good. Love everything that Rick does highly recommend. Especially if you love mythology, which I do. Ghost Squad by Clarabelle Ortega, the only book on this list that I don't own a physical copy of, which is ridiculous. This book was amazing. It is mid-grade. It involves a girl with Latin heritage, so you get to learn about Latin heritage and Dia de los Muertos and just all of that. Loved it. Speaking of Dia de los Muertos, Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Fucking loved it. This book was so good, so inclusive, so diverse. Absolutely loved it perfect for the spooky season. Highly recommend. Cannot recommend enough. Aiden has another book coming out this year. I'm so super excited for it. Spoiler alert, it will be on my most anticipated reads of 2021. So look out for that as well. The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. Uh, this book destroyed me, in case you're wondering. Um, this book is a collection of essays and poems by Marina Keegan, who tragically died a few days after her college graduation. And she had done all of this work and had been very prominent in um, publishing short stories in like The New Yorker and doing all kinds of things and just had this outlook on life. And so part of this book is nonfiction and is about like things that she wrote about her real life, but also there's fiction. And there were a lot of really good things in here. I think my favorite of this is still Challenger Deep. Um, really enjoyed this book overall. Um, definitely be prepared to cry because it's emotional reading, especially the foreword and the introduction by people who used to teach her. It's hard, but it's a good book. Another mid-grade, The Battle for Wandla. This is the third book in the Wander trilogy. Um, this series is just so cute, but also, again, deals with a lot of dark topics. It deals with the future and humanity of humans and what kind of people will be in the future. And just a really, really good book. Sci-fi, enjoyed it. Well Played by Jen DeLuca, the follow-up to Well Met, which are both set at a renaissance fair and are adult romance. So loved that. Highly recommend. The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, also adult romance. 
also involves a woman finding out about her father when she is an adult. This was a gift from Brianna at Rainy Days and Stormy Nights and this was glorious, wonderful, I loved it. Uh, so much introspective on, especially um, because Nina is learning about her father after his death and she's learning about him from all the different people in his life. And so she's learning that he wasn't the same person throughout all of his life, which I think is true. It's very, uh, it's very thought provoking. I really enjoyed this book as well, obviously, or we wouldn't be talking about it. Also, not this book, but the follow-up to this book, um, not These Witches Don't Burn, but This Coven Won't Break. Also, this book was good too, but This Coven Won't Break was definitely a lot better. Loved it. Um, this series follows witches and it's awesome because I love books about witches, but also it was just awesome. So there's that. The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. What I thought was the third and final book in the Truly Devious series, but no, in case you didn't know, newsflash, there's a fourth book coming out this year. Who knew? Not me, because this was sold as a trilogy, and uh, now there's another book coming out. I think this wrapped up the mystery from the first two books perfectly. I loved it. It was amazing. Highly recommend. Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco, the fourth and final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Uh, this one was interesting. It was a very weird ending. Um, it definitely has like Audrey Rose's feminism vibes. I really like the setting. I like the crime aspect, but you know I'm all here for the romance. And the romance was so tested in this book and just so much happened and it was just wonderful. A great ending to a series. Fable by Adrienne Young. Another Wednesday Books read. Unfortunately, the art gods did not come through for me for getting the follow-up to this book from Wednesday Books, but you know, nobody's perfect. So this book is amazing. It's like on a pirate ship and it involves sailing and found friendships and learning to trust people whom you used to love and about, you know, being able to protect yourself and stand up for yourself and to fight for yourself and what you think you need and how to survive and it's just a really great series. Adrienne Young wrote one of my favorite books of last year which was Sky in the Deep and I just auto buy author for me from here on out. Love this book so much. Second to last book, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This was part of the book club at my local bookstore earlier this year. Um, I would not probably have ever picked it up or at least not picked it up as soon if it wasn't for that and I'm really glad that I did. I really enjoyed this. Um, I rated this a five out of five stars and I think part of that is because I don't necessarily, it's the first thing I think I've ever read that was written in verse and I don't know that I would have rated it as high had I not listened to the audiobook that was read by the author and then he has um, a little bit of a um, interview at the end of it and he's talking about poetry and writing things in verse and how um, good poetry doesn't have to be written well, it just has to make you feel something. And I think this book was very powerful and definitely made me feel something and that is why I gave it a five out of five stars because I think it did its damn job very well. Which leads us to my favorite book of the year, the only book that got a full 5.25 out of five stars and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I'm way behind on this book, I understand. Um, we read this as part of the AuthorTube chat book club earlier this year. This book, guys, this book was so amazing. I'll link our uh, chat down below if you want to check that out. But definitely just so much about um, self-discovery, romance, how the world can treat people who are not the same, those who are outliers, um, platonic friendships and relationships and just so much in this book. It is so heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time and there's just so dang much that happened in this book. I cried, I sobbed, it just, this book was so good, so dang good. Cannot recommend it enough. It's one of those books that has like all the booktube hype and it definitely deserves it and I love it. I'm so glad I read it this year. Um, I don't know how, it's one of those things where if we hadn't picked it for the book club, it probably would have sat on my shelf forever because I don't read a lot of adult books, but I definitely need to change that because as you can tell, there were a lot of adult books on my favorites of the year. Highly recommend this book and all the others that we just discussed. Those were my stats and favorites for 2020. Let me know in the comments below if you have any comments, questions, concerns, if you have read any of these books and you want to talk about them, or if you have a stats video and you would like me to check it out, let me know down below because I like to watch stats videos because I'm a weirdo. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. So if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!